Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about the potassium channel. The structure of the potassium channel was solved by Dr. Rod McKinnon from Rockefeller University in New York and for solving this structure he got the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2003. The potassium channel is obviously an ion channel because it passively transports potassium ions. It's called a voltage-gated channel because the opening and closing of the gate of the channel is, is dependent on voltage. So this is the structure of a potassium channel. It contains four subunits. One, two, three, four. So if you're looking down into the channel, the potassium ion would flow through here, and these are the four subunits. If you're looking from the side, from the plane of the membrane, then here are the four subunits. It's sort of cone-shaped, and the larger opening faces towards the inside of the cell. And this is a single subunit, and you can see the alpha helices in this single subunit. The channel, the potassium channel, is water-filled. So potassium can pass around 22 angstroms within the channel and still remain solvated with water. So we know that pota the potassium ion hydrogen bonds with water and therefore is surrounded by a water shell. So it can pass somewhat into the channel and still keep its water shell. However, here you can see that the channel narrows, and this portion is called the selectivity filter. So before entering the selectivity filter, the potassium ion needs to lose its water shell. So here it goes. Here's the potassium ion with its water shell entering the channel. There you go. It reaches the selectivity filter, and it has to lose its water shell. It's going in, going in, and then it loses its water shell, and then it makes favorable interactions with the selectivity filter. So the breaking of the bonds here is called desolvation because it's losing its water shell, and the making of bonds in the channel the selectivity filter of the channel is called resolvation. If the resolvation energy is greater than the desolvation energy, then potassium will flow through the channel. So here is bond breaking and bond making. Desolvation and resolvation. And it goes through to the other side and it once again forms its water shell around itself. So the energy cost of dehydrating a potassium ion is compensated by favorable, favorable interactions within the selectivity filter. So you can see here the desolvation energy, the energy cost of breaking the water shell, is smaller than the resolvation energy within the potassium channel site. So biochemical reactions usually occur in pairs. A favorable reaction is always coupled to an unfavorable reaction. Here, the resolvation is greater than the desolvation energy. Therefore, the potassium ion is passively transported through the channel. And this channel is selective for potassium. So sodium actually cannot flow through this channel because it's too small to interact favorably with the selectivity filter. And I will explain this in my next screencast.